Hi, this is Old School DM, um, maker of cut files for various 3D terrain. You can find my cut files on cardboard-warriors, uh, the forums. Uh, but if you just do an old search, search for Old School DM and cut files, you'll find me. Um, this uh, video is about how to use my uh, cut files to build the Elven Mill, a beautiful model by Lord ZZ Works, available on RPG Now. It has uh, these really cool custom buttons that let you change the textures and geometry. Uh, so there are four, if you bought it before uh, Christmas, you get four options. Uh, wood Elf, which has the um, dragon heads, the Moon Elf, which has the decorations like this, it's a kind of blue color, the Medieval, similar, but in a kind of stony look, and then uh, the Special Texture, which was a bonus given to the first 100 buyers of Dark. You'll notice that the geometry actually changes, especially if you look at, for example, the windows uh, between the uh, wood and the Dark Elves, you'll see that even the frames are different shapes. Well, this is also true for the uh, mill itself, the, w the wheel, uh, the geometry changes for each. So I made special customizable cut files uh, that have a kind of button mechanic, and these videos will help explain that. Likewise, you can change the number of doors. You can turn on uh, any of the four doors. You cannot turn off the first door. Um, you must put at least one door in, but you can mix and match. Likewise, there will be uh, customization features in um, the cut files. So the first thing you need to do is pick your customization. Uh, pick wood, elf, and four wood doors. Uh, and then uh, save them as bitmaps, because you're going to merge these bitmaps with the cut files for printing in Silhouette Studio. Um, you're not going to print from PDF, you're going to print from Silhouette Studio. So uh, choosing, uh, I like to use um, Adobe Acrobat because it has a file option that allows you to do a save as and you can save as an image format and I like to save mine as PNG but you can choose any high resolution image format that studio will read um, and uh, and I just choose that um, and then it saves away as PNG files each and every page um, and you'll find those files now with the custom textures on them in your folder. Alternatives include printing to PDF. If you have a PDF driver, uh, once you've made the changes, you just print to PDF files. I mean, I, uh, yeah, uh, or, uh, well, interesting, you print to PDF and then import with something like GIMP into and saving as PNG. It's a bunch of extra steps, but trust me, um, having the thing cut out perfectly for you uh, is worth the extra effort. You, what you want to end up with is every page of the model, um, in a bitmap forward, uh, format customized appropriately. And, of course, make note of your customizations because you're going to use those in a moment um, to align the cut files. So that's the end of the export part of the step. So you should have uh, exported all the files with the customized um, settings for the number of windows and the texture. You can see those here in my folder. Um, then you will open each of the individual cut files, which you were able to get from um, from Cardboard Warriors. Uh, in this case, I've opened page two, which has a bunch of interesting stuff on it. Um, let me zoom in so you can see a couple things. One, it has a little bit of a reminder about what we're about to do here. If we zoom into this section here, you'll see it describes the technique we're about to go through uh, in case you don't have access to this video or just forgotten. Um, so we're going to zoom back here. Um, and what you'll see is the page of cut on the right. So first thing we need to do is we need to import, we need to merge with the appropriate page from the bitmap. So you go to Silhouette Studio, you choose your bitmap format minus PNG, Oop, where are we? I'm in the cutoffs. Here we go. Uh, here's PNG, page two, and that will load in. Now, in this particular case, um, the bitmap 
is perfectly aligned, but on a lot of these pages it's not. You'll have to do an adjustment stage, which we'll simulate right now. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send that bitmap that I just merged to the back so that it doesn't interfere with um, visibility and moving stuff around. Uh, I'm going to zoom in somewhere where there's like a right angle or something and make sure I like the alignment. Um, and so what I often do is zoom in twice with the uh, zoom tool and then you can use the arrow keys to move you know, you can, uh, the object so that it's properly aligned. Mm, I kind of like that. So, um, that's the first part, is to align the bitmap with the cut file. And this happens because when people make um, the geometry like Lord's Easy, they didn't put registration marks in, so there's not perfect alignment. And this is an example of an overflowing page where it might have been useful to shift things up or down uh, in order to get the maximum amount of cut area. So, um, I don't know if you noticed, um, the, uh, some of these lines are not cut lines, or there, there are currently no cut, like right over here, there's something that's marked no cut. If we go to the cut type, you'll see it's no cut. What I've done is, all of these buttons um, represent possible geometry combinations for this page. So what you're supposed to do is click on the ones that um, are the geometry you customized for. In this case, we chose Wood Elf. So we'll click on wood cut, and then we'll go over to the cut style, and we'll say I want to cut those. Um, oh, I actually clicked cut edge by mistake, so it made it really red. So I'm going to switch it back to cut. Um, it'll remind you, basically all I've done is those buttons don't actually do anything. They're just a way to handily grab the group. I've grouped each one of these buttons represents a group of lines that needs to have the same style. The groups that you're not cutting, you make a style no cut. So to make woodcut go away, I click on no cut, it's gone. And the good news is you'll know exactly which ones are selected because when you collect, select them, the words also get outlined appropriately. So wood score, I click the perforate option. And now you'll see over here by the door, and these things now have cut lines and perf lines. Um, if I were doing moon, medieval, or dark cut, I'd also do the bottoms, the buttons at the bottom, which are some common between them. Uh, I think I only did this on this file. Most of them, I'm, I just, if it was duplicate lines, I just ended up duplicating to make it easier. Um, but so you look at these selection groups that look like buttons, click on them and set their cut style. Um, you are now ready to print and cut. Um, it's aligned. The appropriate buttons have been made cuts and scores. Um, in other pages, there's one, for example, which has four door options in it. You just click the one for the door and select cut for the doors you want, otherwise they won't get cut. Um, and this is really the basics for all of the files. There's one exception um, worth noting. Um, let me pull up the, the folder. Uh, it, sometimes there, uh, in the case of the number of doors, some of the pages, page nine is an example, um, I actually have two versions of the cut file. They were two different between whether or not you had the door um, that affected the roof on that top, on that page or not. So you'll see with window and without window. You'll know when you look at the bitmap which one's correct. So if you don't see the exact right one, if the geometry doesn't match your bitmap, look to see in the file uh, in the folder if there's another one with the correct geometry. Um, so those are the basic steps. I'm going to do additional videos about the model itself and some of the things I did and some of the things I particularly loved about it uh, and some of the mods I did. Uh, but this is the core. If you uh, grab the cut files and you know your way around Silhouette Studio, um, you now know how to cut out everything you need to cut out to build your Elven Mill.